Hey guys, it's X and Shadow, and welcome back to Let's Play Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. There's no way that people could be here. Seriously, that's just so unlikely. Huh? What's that you say? You've seen a chest like this before? Get out of here! No, no, no. I'm not like those chests, I promise. Look at my eyes. Tell me I'm lying. I'm not. Seriously. Just get me out of here. You'll see. Don't make me beg. What? Come on. You know how ridiculous you sound right now. I'm laughing in here. You honestly think I'm going to curse you when I get out? Curse you? Well, I did plan on doing something to you, but it's not so much a curse as a... Well, a really wonderful new ability that'll help you go to special places. Doesn't that sound nice? Aw, oh, come on, please. Just find the key and open the chest, okay? I know it's here somewhere. I can't just go look for it myself. I'm in here. So, pretty pretty please. Hmm... Should I? Should I not? You know, I'm not feeling dickish today. Wee fools! I should have seen that coming, to be honest. What you were expecting? Did you think a lovely lady would pop out or something? Now I'm gonna hit you with the king of curses, the cursiest curse ever. Fear my terrible power, you will know the pain of having your body roll up. Be cursed! Wee hee now you're cursed, loser. Savor your suffering. When this curse strikes you, you won't be even able to walk. That's how horrible it is. Wee hee hee, your suffering amused me. And so I laughed. And now you can show me your cursed play so I can laugh all the more. Just press and hold R. Then rotate the control stick repeatedly. So anyway, yeah, this is our new curse ability. When you go into your flat form uh, and you roll the control stick up, you turn into a little cardboard tube, which will allow us to go under certain things and uh, travel to different places. It's also just a generally faster form of travel. Uh, not as fast as the Yoshi, though, so uh, it's not the best way to travel, and controlling it's a little bit awkward, so you're really only going to be using it for getting past certain things. But now that we have that new curse ability, we can go and continue on with the game. So that's pretty nice, uh, getting cursed again. This is the only game where I can understand that being cursed is good, like being cursed in, si in Simon's Quest sucks, being cursed in Pokemon sucks, being cursed in Dragon Quest is a bitch, because uh, every time you get cursed you have to go all the way back to the church and pay a few hundred gold in order to get it done, and then you go back to grinding, and then there's the guys, and then they curse you, and then it's just an endless spiral of bleh. But anyway, yeah, uh, now that, uh, remember where we got the key to the door to get into the, here? Um, into the room with the, uh, uh, chest in it, I mean. Well, now that we have the, uh, the rolly ability, uh, we can go under that. So, that's where we're heading next, so we can actually continu continue on with the game. Yeah, uh, this part, not a whole lot actually happens when it comes to plot. We're just sort of moving through the motions, you know, actually getting some gameplay done. Which is really exciting after uh, the filler tournament chapter for Chapter 3. I mean, I know that animes usually have a filler tournament chapter, but I didn't think a game would have one either. So anyway, yeah, you just turn into your platform, rotate the control stick, and then you're good. And if you look behind here, star piece. Yeah. Um, so now, uh, in order to get past, you gotta take out Flurry and blow away this thing of hay. Um, it's a little bit easier to figure out than those boxes in Chapter 3, but I'm pretty sure if you use Goombella's Tattle, there's a hint to that. So, um, that's pretty much uh, how you tell what you're supposed to be doing at this point. So anyway, uh, now we're on, well, and the area we're on right now is called Twilight Trail. Um, it's a pretty standard area, but get used to this, because you're going to be going through this area quite a lot. But now we've got a new enemy. Uh, these are Crazy Daisies. Uh, a little bit earlier, we, we're running into them a little bit earlier than we did in Paper Mario 1. Uh, they were in Chapter 6 there. Uh, their biggest thing is, is that uh, they, uh, their attacks, um, they can put you to sleep. And that is really fucking annoying. Um, especially because uh, the timing to block the Crazy Daisy's attack. If you get the timing down right, um, well, you know, you won't get hurt. But the thing is, is that uh, the timing to block it is very, very awkward. Uh, see, they attack by... Um, they attack by uh, singing a song. They go like... Da, 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 da. And then once the song's over, you'll take the damage and you might go to sleep. So uh, try to learn the um, the timing for that. It's generally at the end of the song. Anyway, I'm trying clock out again because both of these guys are uh, charged up, and you know that's a pain in the ass. 
So, but this time it worked, which is great because now I can um, take them out at my leisure without having to worry about um, without having to worry about the time, you know. Which is a pain in the ass when you're when you've got two guys there and you just don't want to take the damage. I mean, you can survive maybe one attack, but you know that's gonna put you at a very big disadvantage for the rest of the trail, especially since there's a lot of enemies in this section. Then, oh God damn it, curse! Yes, the curse is upping my defense when the enemies are stunned. So yeah, a troll curse moment. That, that was pretty much the entire playthrough for me, mind you. I don't think the curse was ever really useful for me once throughout this playthrough. But, you know, I wasn't going to be spending the money on anything else anyway, so... Meh. Uh, this is an earthquake, yet another... Um, it's yes, yet another uh, attacking item that I'm probably never going to use. So, But I wasn't going to use the in coupon either, so I just... Uh, I threw that out. Because, you know, I might use the attacking item if I'm in a, a bad situation. Uh, here, um, oh, at this point, um, I was thinking of uh, a different area, but um, I should, I'll mention that when I get to it, because there is something that I miss in this trail that I don't end up picking up until near the very end of the game. Anyway, right there I got the hammer throw badge, which is actually one of the more useful, um, uh, one of the more useful attacks uh, badges in the game. Basically, what it does is it allows you to use. Um, well, it allows you to throw your hammer, obviously. But that does two things. One, it allows you to attack enemies on the ceiling or spiked enemies in the air, which aren't really that common, but that's beside the point. But it also allows you to attack um, uh, airborne enemies with your full strength. So, like, if you've got an airborne enemy and it's got one point of defense, if I were to jump on it at this point, uh, I would only do two damage because, you know, my, it's the jump attack is two, two powered attacks. But if I were to throw the hammer at it, it would be three because the throwing the hammer is one four power attack. Uh, now we all, here we also have a new enemy, um, Hyperclats. Uh, what they do is they're just like normal uh, hyper enemies. They uh, they can charge up their attacks and then do a lot of damage. They're kind of a pain in the ass because not only do they uh, can they charge, but their attack and defense scores are already really high, so they're sort of hard to deal with. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention about cra um, Crazy Daisies. They're really fucking annoying, and when you're just about to kill them and rake in those sweet star points, they run away like pussies. Because they are pussies. So anyway, here's another uh, area where we need to use Flurry to get past. You just blow away in another invisible thingy. And there you go. Um, I'm pretty sure, uh, yet again, uh, Goombella will give you a hint if you get stuck there. But since you're watching this, you won't get stuck here. Yeah. So uh, now we're in the last area of the Twilight um, Trail. Uh, we can't do anything to this uh, rock over here, so instead... I was getting confused, uh, and you don't uh, blow the rock, you instead blow another invisible thingy over here, and then that uh, leaves a secret passage, which you can break with the, uh, what's this called? The super jump. Sorry. Um, but in the background, you push that block, and then the, that'll open up another secret passage. So you just jump in there, just jump in there, there we go, and then you're on the other side. Now, uh, this is the point where I missed uh, a, a, a hidden item. Uh, behind that tree there is a Shine Sprite, so you're going to want to get that. Um, I missed it at this point, and I don't end up picking it up until uh, right before Chapter 8, which is the last chapter. So, uh, yeah, I, I missed that. Yeah, this is Creepy Steeple, the nasty monster's place. This place wigs me out. Look, Gonzalez, let's just get that Crystal Star and get out of here, fast. Oh, we're already at the dungeon. Seems kind of quick, but I'm not complaining, especially considering how long Chapter 3 took. So anyway, uh, you can go into the uh, the Creepy Steeple by uh, jumping, by rolling through the uh, little hole in, in there, and that's where you're supposed to go, but I figured I'd show off this area first because yeah, I feel like it. And plus, there's a new enemy down here. Buzzy Beetles. Um, Buzzy Beetles are very similar to Koopas, uh, only difference is, one, they've got a lot more defense, so you're not generally not going to be doing damage on the first jump at all. Uh, they're also uh, resistant to fire attacks, too, so keep that in mind. Uh, and also, 
they will always flip back over on the on the turn after you jump on them. So let's just say I jump on a Buzzy Beetle. Uh, the turn right after that, it's going to flip itself back over. It's not like a Koopa where it'll just wiggle helplessly on the ground for a few seconds before it decides to get back up. You know, it, it, they get up relatively quickly. And so this room uh, has a lot of enemies in it, uh, like these guys, spiked buzzy beetles. Um, these are a part of the, well, spike tops, sorry. They're pretty much spiked buzzy beetles. But here's the annoying thing about spike tops is that, again, you know, you can't uh, jump on them and get the defense gone. So, and since fire and explosions don't work either, uh, you know, the most common attacking items aren't going to do a whole lot. So this is where um, a, using a special move or stuff and such will probably be the most helpful. Like I did a power smash there and I only did two damage. So uh, super guards are also very helpful. Um, but yeah, I, normally I would recommend doing something like using gulp because that goes through defense. But at this point, uh, you you might want to stick with using items. That's just the most convenient way of taking them out. So anyway, uh, be careful when you go into this room because you're likely going to run into a lot of enemies like that. Uh, but anyway, I got a slow shroom which slowly regenerates health over a long period of time. But look at all the look at all the stuff that I'm going to get uh, from look at all the stuff that I'm going to get from getting all these coins. So I should probably just pick it all up. No, wait, you idiot! What did you do? You walked off screen! You walked off screen! What is wrong with you? Yeah, that was my own stupid fault. Good thing I'm not going to need the money anyway. But anyway, yeah, um, level up, I guess. Uh, so, uh, it's... I was thinking here, I was thinking, what am I supposed to upgrade next? Uh, but it, it was hard points, so I ended up upgrading hard points next. But anyway, uh, what's going to happen inside the creepy steeple? Will we run into something that'll scare, that'll leave us uh, pale as a ghost? Find out next time on Let's Play Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door. I'm X and Shadow, and I'll see you guys later.